when, when did you hear about this project for the first time? Um, in May, I was making a film in here in Louisiana, but but in New Orleans and around New Orleans, actually with with Diane Lane's husband Josh Brolin, um, and I heard about it. M my agent brought me the script uh, on one of the weekends that Diane was there, and so I knew they were in negotiations with her and talks with her to see if she would play uh, Penny T Chinnery and uh, then I read it c the day after or so or, or certainly within a couple days and liked the script very much and then there was a lot of back and forth over, over a good, good deal of time but that's when I heard about it what did you think of the script? Why did you like it? Well, for a lot of reasons, I... I had really loved this horse when I was young. Uh, this happened when I was 19, secretary, and I remember all the races very well. And Oddly enough, I think it must have been because it was the weekend of the Preakness, which is, is obviously most Americans might know what it is, but this is for the foreign market, which is the second of the big triple crown horse races. And I think it was because of that, I just suddenly thought, oh, I bet all of the secretariat races are on YouTube or somewhere on the internet, and just started watching them again. And this was before I'd even heard about the film and spent the kind of half a day doing that um, just because I love that horse and love to watch him and it was so the the way he won the triple crown was so unforgettable to me was it also the coverage that was different within the media coverage or, or was it such a phenomenon well The media coverage was different f full stop, meaning the media was a different thing in those days. Um, probably, but no, I, I, the, the media probably made a difference because at that time there weren't 200 channels and it was something covered probably I imagine on I, I imagine it was ABC's wide world of sports but I'm not at all sure about that it could have been NBC or CBS Haywood Hale Brune I think actually maybe it was CBS because I think he worked for CBS who was one of the journalists of the time sort of distinctive journalist um, I, I think probably a big difference is then television had more, because there was much less choice, television had more of a tendency to, to show you a collective experience. I mean, it was something that made a collective experience because there weren't that many channels. So if you were watching TV on a Saturday afternoon in the late spring and early summer, uh, this could have been very likely, this could have been what you were very likely to have watched. Whereas now that's not necessarily the case. Uh, so the, the things that people watch were much more uniform because there were so many fewer channels. So. So it's interesting, but he was a he was a secretary was a real phenomenon at the time. Oh, absolutely! Secretary it was uh, on the cover of national magazines and uh, the cover of Time, the cover I think of Newsweek, of Sports Illustrated, certainly probably more than once. Uh, he he was written about very 
intelligibly by a number of writers. Um, Bill Knack probably being his kind of primary chronicler, uh, who wrote great stories about him. Bill's story about Secretariat's death, I mean, uh, more or less about his death, uh, was in the Sports Illustrated book of, I forget if it's 50 or 100 greatest sports stories of, of the past century, a few years back. And yeah, he, he was a very much loved and very much followed horse. I mean, uh, absolutely legendary. Now, the, the character you play in Siat, uh, Lucian, um, can you describe him? And he, was, he wasn't ready to jump on board right away, was he? No. I mean, of course, uh, our movie veers from what the real facts <coughs> uh, of Lucian Lauren, who was Secretariat's trainer, of, of his involvement, because in fact, his son was the trainer at that stable, and then when he left, Lucian replaced him. But in our story, he's not eager what we focus on in this story is that he's not eager to join Penny Chenery, Penny Tweedy, that's her, her married name, her stable, because he sees it as maybe being on the way down. Her father ha has been incapacitated, who is the person who really knew the horses and ran the stables and made all the deals, et cetera, et cetera, for horses and really knew the business. And at that time, when she took over for her father, she really was a housewife. I mean, that, that was the sum of her li life's experience. Um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, she'd grown up around horses and knew something about them. But so I at least in our story, he, he sees it as a not very attractive option. But in our story, when he, she first approaches him, he says no. But then he starts to look at Secretariat's breeding and follow his bloodlines back to some uh, quite noted horses and decides that maybe he would be worth the trouble to train him. What sort of people are horse trainers? I mean, what's, is it a real understanding of horses? I mean, what? I have no idea. I don't know. There's a single one except maybe one or two I've met on this. Uh, I assume, at least in what I've read about him or other trainers, I mean, they're obviously people who are knowledgeable and, and quite passionate about what they do. And it is a, quite a massive business, too. And they make their living on, on wins and on commissions from winning horses and on commissions from sales. So, uh, 